So what's your favourite moment in the masterpiece that is the Star Wars Holiday Special? The fact you can see the exact moment Harrison Ford just stopped giving a fuck about Star Wars. The Star Wars Holiday Special, to paraphrase the various reviews that have come out about it over the years, is a big old pile of shit. And it's noted that while he still had a stranglehold over the Star Wars brand, George Lucas made every attempt to bury it forever, only ever granting permission for a single official copy to be made, which he of course gave to Carrie Fisher. So what's the story behind George Lucas trying to get rid of the special? Because we all know it was shit. Yes, but the story goes that after like the orbital bombardment from critics of the special, Lucas made every effort possible to erase it from Star Wars history and canon forever. And he turned out multiple requests from TV studios, like asking to re-air it in their own like, you know, time zone. Giving the special the dubious distinction of only ever being aired officially once. And he was hoping that like, you know, with time people would forget. But unfortunately, people at home had obviously recorded the special because it was very hotly anticipated at the time. And there are dozens of bootleg copies of the like special out there of varying degrees of quality, some of which still include like the original ads that were placed alongside the special when it aired. And George Lucas, like, he fucking hates this fact. There's a great quote from him, he said, if I had time and a hammer, I would destroy every copy in existence. <laughs> Isn't it true that they tried to put it on the prequel, like the release prequel DVD? Yes, um, George Lucas has been asked multiple times, well obviously while he was still in charge of Star Wars, and he said no, it's not going on. The only ever, like, the only time he ever relented was to put on the Boba Fett cartoon short that aired in the special as part of like the Blu-ray anniversary release or some shit like that, but he has actively refused to ever put it in any DVD or special edition release of Star Wars while he had that, while he had the ability to do that. I don't think anything sums up how shitty the special is, more than the fact George Lucas didn't want it sullying the prequels. But speaking of the prequels, Brad, like, the Star Wars Holiday Special does have a tenuous link to them because the Star Wars Holiday Special just so happens to be the first time the Wookiee homeworld of Kashyyyk was ever shown officially in Star Wars canon. And obviously in the prequel, they go to Kashyyyk. And what the artists who were designing Kashyyyk had to do is go to George Lucas and ask for a copy of the Holiday Special so they could use it as a reference point for Kashyyyk in those movies, which apparently George Lucas was really annoyed about. But of course, it had to be done to ensure there were no visual inconsistencies between the Wookiee homeworld as shown in the special and as shown in the prequels. And the favourite bit is though, it's like, the, the, the holiday special at the time. It's like, oh, this is the best depiction we've got of Wookiee culture. And I just want you to know, Brad, just put in a picture of what a Wookiee looked like in that show. <laughs> That's what they had to use as reference for the fucking prequels. <laughs> It's almost as creepy as Sonic. Oh God, no, his weird fur lips and his awful gangly frame. Like, do you know what we're gonna do at the end of this fucking video? Because if you mention it, I'm gonna read through the Wikipedia page for the Sonic fucking movie because it is hilarious. Like, for reference, we're recording this the day after the trailer came out. We know it sucks. And maybe the main changes when this airs, but that's gonna be a last. We'll do it in a bit. I'm assuming considering how much of a control freak Lucas is, when they created something that was horrific, he would turn around and say that it wasn't like, it wasn't to do with him. Yeah, he's tried to do that over the years and depending on like what, what interview you look at, he either claims that he had nothing to do with it or only had like very little to do with it. But that's a claim counteracted by people who actually worked on the special. So obviously George Lucas well known for being a control freak when it came to anything Star Wars related. They said like, not only did he review dailies, so like the footage they shot that day, like, you know, to sign off on it, he personally signed off on every like addition and detail they had to ensure that it fit with his vision of Star Wars canon, which obviously he's not very happy about because it's so fucking bad. <laughs> But I love the idea that he just signed off like he saw this fucking abomination. That's a Wookiee. That's a, that's my Wookiee right there. That's a, that's a some that's a member of the Chewbacca race right there. As an aside, have you ever heard about all the bullshit George has done with his own like universe? So obviously he created it, and while he obviously was in charge of Star Wars, like anything that came out of his mouth instantly became canon. But but obviously he didn't know the universe as well as some of the fans did. Because obviously he might have created the world, but his fans live in it. They're the ones who read all the novels multiple times. I think they were going to make a Darth Maul action game, right, akin to like Devil May Cry or something like that. 
And the story goes that when George Lucas was going to come in and like, you know, look at what the company had so far, a representative from Lucasfilm came in before him and said, like, um, just before like, you meet Mr. Lucas, just one thing, don't correct him on anything Star Wars related. He doesn't like that. If you do, you'll be asked to leave immediately. And he came in and he's, like, he's looking around the office and he saw like Darth, the statue of Darth Maul. So, oh, that's pretty cool, that's the Darth Maul. And apparently there's a, a statue of another member of his race. I don't know who the statue was of, but like George Lucas apparently went up to it, put them both together and went, they're friends. And what the people there wanted to like correct him on is the fact that those two characters live like centuries apart. So what the game had to become was, oh, so we can't do Darth Maul, because obviously Darth Maul was dead, and it was going to be Darth Maul with like robot legs after surviving, getting cut in half. And instead, they had to make rewrite the story to be, oh, it's Darth Maul's descendant in the future or some shit. And the story got so convoluted, they just can the entire thing. Because <laughs> obviously they wanted to correct and say, well, actually, no, those characters live like hundreds of years apart. And he's like, no, they're friends, make it work and left. And it's like, okay, thanks, George. We can't have a Darth Maul character action game, thanks to you. To bring it back to the holiday special about how, like, you know, controlling George Lucas was of Star Wars, um, a great tidbit from people about, you know, words on them is that in addition to viewing dailies and signing off on everything, George Lucas would also provide helpful hints on how to make scenes better. <laughs> <laughs> and to accompany that fact, Brad, just put in any scene from the special now so we can all see all the great improvements and suggestions that George Lucas made. Come on, Molly, let's see a little smile. Come on. There, that's better. Thing is, I've seen this holiday special. Yeah, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but isn't everyone's in it? Like they got the entire oh, yeah. cast back. Yeah, the people again. I won't be surprised if you aren't seeing it because it's not even like it's it's so bad. It's funny. It's just bad. So I wouldn't recommend anyone go see it, even though it's available for free on YouTube. Because every time it gets taken out, some other fucker uploads it. But yeah, they managed to somehow get every member of the principal cast of A New Hope to reprise their role. Apparently for not very much money. Which is presumably why Harrison Ford looks so pissed off. <laughs> because they're, they're part of their agreement, we'll come back and do it. Because it's like, a, you've got us for a day. And they made him just like the made Han Solo. Harrison Ford just walk around these fucking ugly Wookiee creatures. <laughs> Given how shitty the final product was, it probably comes as no surprise to everyone at home that most of the actors involved with it said like working on the holiday special was a terrible, horrendous experience, with the sole exception of Carrie fucking Fisher. And uh, apparently her only stipulation was that she got to sing, because she just wanted to sing, and George Lucas, I, I, I guess, you can sing, and she sings this really terrible, god-awful song, where you can clearly see she's just fucking like either She's she's high on something. I'm gonna say her eyes are not focused on fucking anything, and she just sings this terrible fucking Christmas esque life day song. So how did Carrie Fisher end up with a copy of the special? In a similar manner to how she ended up appearing in the special in the first place as a favour. Because it's reported that George Lucas wanted Carrie Fisher to like record a commentary track for a DVD special at some point in time. And she again said, I will do it for free on one condition. You give me a copy of the holiday special. And George Lucas said, well, no, I'll pay. Said, no, that's my, that's my sole condition. If, you, if, you, if we can't agree on that, I'm not going to do it. And obviously George Lucas begrudgingly went up and got a copy made, the only official one in existence, and gave it to Carrie Fisher. And she did the commentary track for that particular DVD box set. Now, you know what I think happened? He went to Spielberg and he went, we got to go back. And them two went to that pit in the desert where they where they buried the E.T. game and where they buried the <laughs> holiday special. Just the, the forgotten, like the forgotten media that I, they want to bury. And then they had to dig up a copy of it and clean it off and give it to her. They <laughs> just gave it to Carrie Fisher. And do you know what my favourite part about this entire story is? So I said, someone asked Carrie Fisher once, like, why did you want a copy of this thing so bad? It's like, it's legendarily terrible. And she went, oh yeah, I know it is. Um, I like to play at house parties and I want people to leave. <laughs> Which is the most Carrie Fisher thing in the fucking world and I love it. So I've tracked down, as I promised earlier in the video, like the Wikipedia page for Sonic Movie, because me and Brad read it earlier, because the trailer came out yesterday, and we were laughing, howling, and just like how, just matter-of-factly, the Wikipedia page is written. And it's annoying, because today, we were actually going to do a, a bit about like one, a piece of our merch being taken down in tangential relation to Star Wars, but fuck it, this is way better, because fuck promoting our own stuff, let's talk about this shitty Sonic movie now. I'm now on the Wikipedia page on what date is it? It's the 31st of April, 
Obviously, changes may be made to it, but I'm reading a copy of it as it was on the 31st of April. And we'll start with, like, you know, just the introduction, because obviously we're all on the same page, aren't we? And then we'll skip to the good stuff. So, Sonic the Hedgehog is an upcoming adventure comedy film distributed by Paramount Pictures and based on the Sega video game franchise. In the film, a small town sheriff assists Sonic as he attempts to escape the government. Right, so there's the plot of the film, basically. Just, there's 30 days in April. It's the 1st of uh, May today. Oh, is it? Fuck! I've got to pay my council tax. Damn it, it's late! <laughs> Cock! Oh, I'm going to get a letter. Bollocks! Oh, anyway, you know what? Let's talk about Sonic. Oh. <laughs> casting. So this, this is where it gets interesting. So the development is funny, but obviously casting is where it gets good. On May 29th, 2018, it was reported that Paul Rudd was in talks for a lead in the role as Tom. A cop who befriends Sonic and will likely team up to defeat Dr. Eggman, but it was later denied. Um, by Paul Rudd, I assume. <laughs> I'm assuming, yeah. A day later, it was announced that James Marsden was cast in an undisclosed role, but later revealed to be Tom Wachowski. Boring as fuck, right? But I just like the idea that Paul Rudd was rumoured and then they immediately denied it. Even he didn't want anything to do with this Love movie. Love if they asked him and he was like, I'm immortal, but even I don't have time for that. <laughs> Design. The production team created a realistic version of Sonic. You fucking do right they did. Adding fur, new running shoes, and two separate eyes. And then there's the little link to where you can go spotting them. And a more human-like physique. Brad, do you just want to put the picture of Sonic's new human-like physique? Oh, so bad. And here's why it cracks me up. Are you ready? They used Ted, the living teddy bear from the Ted films, as a reference of how to insert a CG character into a real-world setting. So I don't know about you, but I'm not, I don't think any movie that uses, like, you know, Seth MacFarlane as an example of what to do in a movie is going to be all that good. But that's just me. Executive producer Tim Miller said in regards to Sonic's new, more human-like physique and fur, it would be weird and it would feel like he was running around nude if he was some sort of otter-like thing. He's a fucking hedgehog dickhead. It's in his name. You're working on him because Sonic the Hedgehog and you just show him as an... Um, no. I would much rather them have made him look more like the actual Sonic and given him a pair of fucking underpants. Yeah. He looks more naked because he's got the human physique. Yeah. If it had been more like anthropomorphized, it'd be okay. You know what gets me? It's, his, it's the fact his hands have fur, which means he has fur on the palm of his hands. Just for a moment, imagine shaking someone's hand, Brad, but that hand's furry. It's not nice, is it? Right, anyway, let's continue, right? Tim Miller, in regards to this set, it will be w weird and it will feel like he's running around nude if he was some sort of otter-like thing. It was always for us fur and we never considered anything different. It's part of what integrates him into the real world and makes him a real creature. Picture to my right, a real creature in the eyes of the executive producer of this movie. According to Miller, this is my favorite bit, Sega was not entirely happy with the design, especially Sonic's eyes. <laughs> oh my god. What are you looking at now? I, I, type, I just typed in Sonic the Hedgehog to look at some pictures, and some guy's done a photoshopped version of it to look like. The real. Oh, look yeah. At. It's amazing. All the, yeah, all the real, all the photoshops are. You can put it behind me and credit the dude if you want. That one? Yeah. There's, there's... It looks perfect. Yeah. Marketing. Test footage was screened at the Comic Con Experience in Brazil in December 6th, 2018. There's no feedback here from that, but. A teaser post was released on December 10th, 2018, revealing the redesigned Sonic. The design received a mostly negative response from critics and fans. Former members of Sonic Team, who created the original Sonic, the Hedgehog Games, expressed surprise at the design. <laughs> the diplomatic way of saying it looks like shit, but we don't want to burn that bridge just yet. A second poster for the film was leaked online shortly after. Fans complained of the lack of resemblance to the games and criticised the positioning of Sonic's legs. <laughs> That's the one where his legs were all really wide apart and the camera was at Sonic's dick height. Images of the Sonic design leaked on March 2019 to more fan criticism. Former Sonic Team president Yuji Naka was shocked by the design and felt the ratio of Sonic's head and abdomen was imbalanced. <laughs> We've got, it gets better. The first trailer premiered on April 4th, 2019 at Comic-Con Las Vegas and was released online on April 30th, which is apparently the last day I met. April, fuck it me. Oh, always remember pay council tax kids. The trailer received near unanimous criticism with Kotaku calling it horrific and a blight upon this weary earth. Commentators took issue with Sonic's design, in particular stating he more resembles a human in a Sonic costume than Sonic himself. <laughs> the film is slated for release later this year. Oh my god, that is amazing. So yeah, look forward to that huge piece of shit, Sonic fans. But you know what? 
That's the that's the level of quality you deserve in a film with the like you know the quality of the games in recent years. I'm just putting it out there. Oh.